Let me get this straight. I wasn't always a straight A student. I mean, I think I did pretty well when I was a kid, maintained good grades, joined heaps of extracurricular activities, good at music, read a lot, all that kind of thing. But then not smart enough to get into Cambridge, not that I've tried. I studied commerce and literature during high school. When I was 17, I decided to go overseas to study. So being a doctor or engineer was out of the question and I wasn't smart enough, nor could I be bothered to study law. That's why I followed my parents' advice and went for accounting. Remember what I said about not being a straight A student? I did not do very well in uni. I couldn't be bothered. I left all my assignments and projects until the last minute, and I managed to scrap a credit average for my GPA. I wasn't proud. But then, no one cares about your grades at school. I learned that early on during high school. So I don't know why, but I continued and I got my CPA three years later. I really, really don't enjoy studying accounting. It's not fun. Have you ever met an accountant who actually likes his or her job? I was mainly following what the society said about getting a stable and regular job. And everything changed with a single mindset shift. Now, I just finished my master's degree and I got a distinction average for my GPA. That was during a pandemic with me changing my career and also with unstable lifestyles. In this video, I will share how I became a true learner, how you can actually enjoy learning and how you can change your study attitude. What I missed out in the story you just heard is that my bachelor and master's degree were completely non-related. So I had a bachelor of commerce degree majoring in accounting and business law, but I got a master's degree in music therapy. And this made it really interesting because that means I either have to work very hard to change the industry or I just found something I am really passionate about. And I think both are true. This is the first lesson I learned about studying. Find something you genuinely care and are curious about. If you do that, work will never feel like work again. You will be having fun while you learn, and motivation and discipline will be taken care of automatically. I want you to think about the last time you were so absorbed in doing something that you forgot about time. You would have experienced this at least once in your life, whether it be playing sports, gaming, having a deep conversation with friends, painting, making music, etc. Now, recall that feeling that complete bliss when you needed not to care about what's going on in the outside world, when you were completely absorbed in your own bubble, making progress and enjoying the journey. Whatever that activity is, you are always learning and discovering something new. And for me, that is music, learning languages and boxing. Sometimes making video or creating graphics as well. Basically things to do with my creativity. The trick here is that you want to find something you are interested in, not too challenging in a way that will throw you over the edge and get distracted. Learning is more fun that way. Think about just learning three chords on the piano instead of a whole song, or learning five French vocabularies instead of talking fluently with a native. Baby steps is key. Yes, I get it. Not everyone has the privilege to study what they like and work on what they care about. I know parents' expectation, society baggage, all that kind of thing. Yes, for some of you, it might not be under your control to do what you're doing. So the second lesson I learned is that this might be a hard pill for you to swallow. You own 100% of the responsibility to make your journey more enjoyable. If you are in uni, join some student clubs, go volunteering, pick electives that you're interested in. Go meet more people. This will make your life a lot easier and happier. Now, you might ask if it was a waste of time and money for me to be in commercial field for five years before actually doing what I wanted to do. I would say maybe, but that's all part of the journey. I won't be where I am now if I didn't have those experiences and skill sets. I started my music therapy business around the time I graduated from my master's degree and my experience and knowledge in the accounting field and in different corporate jobs definitely helped me with setting things up without feeling overwhelmed or lost. If you can, equip yourself with skills that can be applied anywhere. Critical thinking, mobility, financial literacy, public speaking, etc. Don't waste your time and complain every day that you're forced in a situation that you don't want to be in. Because that's just part of life and it's your responsibility to make it not suck that much. 
And this also ties to the third lesson I learned in my academic studies. Think long term. Your high school grades don't matter much after you get into uni or have some work experience. And your uni degree and your GPA don't matter much within two years after graduation. It is so much easier to be good enough in certain things, like achieving 85 to 90% of something rather than aiming for 95 to 98%. Yeah, it comes down to what you want to do with your life. Like, why do you want to get high grades? Maybe you need to get that scholarship. Make your own judgment. When I was doing my master degree, I was aiming for a GPA of 70% on average, which I thought was attainable according to my lifestyle and my schedules. I fought for every opportunity to learn, like co emailing clinics for observations, networking with people ahead of me, and even went to Brisbane for a five week placement during a lockdown. I actually managed to finish all my placements in person, which was such a blessing during the pandemic in this healthcare industry. Experience is irreplaceable. So really think about what you want to get out of this when you're a student. Where do you want to be in three years time? And what is the first step that you can do today to get you closer to that goal? The last lesson is something I learned one year into my master's degree. Personality is not permanent. This is a reference to Dr. Benjamin Hardy's book with the same title. The interesting thing is, human beings are not very good at thinking long term. If I ask you if you would be the same person as you are now in 10 years time, you might probably answer yes with certain personality traits and habits you think are fixed in your life. But if now I ask you if you are the same person as you were 10 years ago, what would you answer? If you are in your mid-20s, you must be very different now comparing to when you were 15. Of course, the older you get, the more stable your lifestyle and preferences will be because you understand yourself better and you know how to make better choices for yourself. But the whole idea is that we are always changing and we can always change intentionally. We don't have to tell ourselves that we suck at studying because we failed math in our third grade. Not that I have. Similarly, we don't have to give up cooking because we burn our egg once. You get the idea. Your failure does not define you and you don't have to identify with your pain. Perspective is everything. Remember, these two shall pass, including your personality. You can change, and you are always one decision away from completely changing your life for better or worse. So these are the four lessons I learned when I pivoted my career and compared my study attitude between my bachelor and my master degrees. I have to say that part of it is luck because I knew what I wanted to do with my life pretty early on comparing to the majority. But hear this, you don't have to have everything figured out and it is okay to not be book smart according to what the society expects you to be. Life is all about exploring and experimenting. Don't forget to have fun while you figure out what you want to do with your life. And don't forget, keep learning. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And don't forget to check out this video here where I talked about the top three mentors who changed my life and Dr. Benjamin Hardy was one of them. I wouldn't have the courage to change my career and achieve my goals without them. This might bring you more motivation and inspiration as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.